What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today we're bringing it back to our Nicholas Sparks movie marathon with his third film adaptation and the movie most people think about when they think about Nicholas Sparks. It's The Notebook. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm on the same field as other guys when they say it's the cheesiest, corniest, sappiest love story ever told. I understand where they're coming from, but my main thing is giving credit where it's due, and even though this isn't my favorite Nicholas Sparks film, I can at least understand the elements where you disagree. So let's talk about this film in a finite group of Nicholas Sparks stories, and let's get cracking. This review was brought to you by the word of the day, finite. Having limits or bounds, aka not infinite. The Notebook tells the story of young love in the 1940s between a poor man and a rich woman, how their financial status constantly tries to tear the two apart, and somewhere in the future, an old man reads this love story to an older woman in a nursing home. Let's talk about the positives first, because there's a few things that I want to mention in the negative section, but as I always say, it's important to give credit where it's due, and this is a well-made film. In my Nicholas Sparks marathon, I may currently prefer the couple and the music in A Walk to Remember, but I prefer the cinematography and power of love in The Notebook, and that's honestly the biggest thing that I've been noticing with all these Nicholas Sparks films. His stories might be predictable and fluffy and whatever, but they often strive pretty hard on answering the question of what will these people do for love? In Message in a Bottle, you have this guy writing the love of his life who died years before love letters, and he's making them the messages in a bottle that he's sending out to sea. In Walk to Remember, you have Landon trying to help Mandy Moore's character finish her life's to-do list. In The Notebook, you got this old man reading a woman the story of her life, and so far, this movie has had the most impact on what that means for love. I feel like women like these films because they put themselves into these characters' lives and say, you know, I want a guy to do that for me. I get it, and the story that The Notebook is trying to slowly tell is mostly one that I can appreciate. Not only that, but I think the acting from everybody in this movie is incredibly well done, especially James Garner, who I think was the standout here. When you look at this as a movie, I think one of the main reasons it stands out to people is because it's probably the most well done in the Nicholas Sparks films. But I did say that I have some problems with it. Not many, mind you, because as a general rule, I actually think the film is fine. But the primary problem with this film is how unbelievably predictable it is. Most romance films are predictable, uh, but Nicholas Sparks often has an element to his stories that, you know, mostly feels predictable, but also changes things up enough for you to not fully understand how it'll end until it gets there. The Notebook doesn't have that. I feel like it tries pretty hard to keep something a secret for the end reveal, but from the very beginning of the movie, you know exactly what they're working at, and you know how it'll end. I don't know a single person who watched this movie that didn't see the end coming a mile away. I also think that this is the very definition of a chick flick. Like if there was a movie genre encyclopedia, and who knows, there might actually be one, and you looked up chick flick, I'd be 97% sure that the image above it would be the notebook. That's not to say that chick flicks, you know, are bad per se, but I think that they paint an improbable portrait of the male body, which is the main reason that guys don't like this movie. It makes them look bad. My main argument is that it's, you know, it's not real. It's a movie. Things like this don't actually happen in real life. They could, hence me saying improbable instead of impossible, but the movie tries desperately hard to convince women that their significant others aren't good enough for them it's a bit annoying. <laughs> Almost everybody that I've ever dated has watched a movie like this or read a book like this or something to that degree and they start crying and saying, I want a life like this. Oh, brother. Well, I'd like to wear underwear outside my pants and go flying through Metropolis, but we can't always get what we want. Another thing that I wanted to talk about, and I alluded to this before, but I prefer the chemistry between the couple in A Walk to Remember. I could relate to them so much more. Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling are great actors, there's no question about that in my mind, but I didn't care about their characters, their chemistry, or their stories. I thought most of the stuff that happened in modern day was endearing, and everything in the 40s was annoying, and even boring. Was it shot well? It was. Did the two have chemistry? I suppose they did. Was it realistic? Eh, I walked to remember was. This... This was more of a fantasy, in my opinion. Could it happen? You know, I guess, especially in the 40s, but I feel like I need a bigger suspension of disbelief to fully believe anything in this movie was real. It's just really sappy, really predictable, and has every single Nicholas Sparks trope in the books. But it was made well, which is why the score won't be bad at all. So let's take a look at that from an unbiased 
technical vantage point, this film did a lot of great stuff, which I've already laid out. That scores 78%. From a biased vantage point, there's actually things that I liked about this movie. They made the movie they intended to make. This is clearly one of Nicholas Sparks' best films, like it or not. The romance part of the film is endearing, so that score is actually 82%, averaging out the two scores to a final rating of 80%, 80 out of 100 possible stars, granting this film with a letter grade of B-. Now, 8 out of 10 makes sense for this movie, because I'm not going to dispute the fact that it was indeed made well. It is definitely not my go-to for his movies. Say the title, and I might groan a little bit, but, you know, I'll watch it with you. <laughs> Guys, let me know your thoughts on The Notebook in the comment section down below. Are you a fan of this chick flick? Uh, do you like chick flicks in general? Is this the best chick flick ever to be made? Or is it something that's incredibly overrated? Let me know. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this review because there's always more like it coming out every single day. Hit the subscribe button and bell to be notified when I come out with my next Nicholas Sparks review, which is supposed to be Knights in Rodanthe, one of his adaptations that I've never actually seen. So don't miss out on that, and until then, peace out! <laughs>